What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Everyday Discipline, where we decode, deconstruct, and reverse engineer self-discipline for you to get whatever, whatever, whatever you want in your life. As I say all the time, and I'm going to sound like a broken record, well, if records were still a thing, but if you want more money, self-discipline is the answer. If you want a better body, you want to see those abs with summer coming up, self-discipline is the answer. You want a better relationship, you want to be more connected, well, you're going to need discipline for that too. Even understanding God, you're going to need discipline for that as well. I'm on a 108-day streak right now reading the Bible, and I'm understanding a whole lot more. Self-discipline is the vehicle that gets you anywhere you guys want to go, but you already know that, and you also know that my name is Brent Kokel, and I am your host. Thank you guys for being on the show here with me today. I love it when people download this show because of what it says about them. So many people say they want to change their lives, but rarely does anybody do anything about it. You've seen people like this all over the place. You know the people that got the great business idea, but haven't done shit with it? You all know those people. Maybe you are those people. You see the people that say, I'm going to lose this 20 pounds, but they've been saying that for the last five years, and it's really not 20 pounds anymore. It's more like 40. Yeah, people say they want to do things, but rarely do they do it. Mostly because they don't have the balls but more than that, it's because they haven't figured out how to get themselves to take action. You haven't. And figuring out how to take action comes in a lot of different ways. But one of the biggest ways that has propelled me to action is these kind of freak events that have happened in my life. And one of them served as a great reminder of this last week. So last week, my family and I were up in the North Shore of Lake Tahoe because my kids were on spring break and there was a snowstorm coming in and it was going to be the last little week of skiing and be able to get some downhill in this season because after this, you know, the temperatures heat up and there isn't going to be snow on the ground and it just won't work. So this was like the last weekend that we had to do it. And so we had a great time. We were up there for a couple days and we got the kids in with some skiing and we were driving home on Wednesday. And we were driving on Highway 80. Highway 80 is running east to west or west to east, however you want to look at it. That's the direction it goes. Starts in San Francisco and I think it ends up someplace like in Delaware or something like that. So it's a major thoroughfare and you go over mountains, obviously, when you're leaving Lake Tahoe to come back down into the Sacramento area, which is where we live. And we're going up the hill and we're in my truck, which is a big Ford Raptor. It's got a four inch lift on it. Like it's a big ass truck. Most of the time feel like bulletproof in that thing because it's so big. Like if I run into another car, another car runs into me, chances of me winning pretty damn good. But this actually made me question it. So we're driving home and we're driving up to the summit, right? There's a summit that really obviously is the top of the hill. That's why they call it the summit. Uh, near Highway 8 or near uh, Truckee, right? We just passed Truckee. It's maybe like another like five miles away from Truckee and we're headed west. We're headed up this hill and Caltrans, which is the maintenance road institution. I don't know if it's a company or if it's a state organization or whatever. They're in charge of making sure the roads in California are good. Hey, bullet points is that they actually need to do a better job of making the roads better in California because I pay a shitload of taxes and our roads suck ass, but that's beside the point. So Caltrans is actually working on Highway 80. They're working on the fast lane. Fast lane's where I'm driving. I'm usually driving like I'm maybe like 72 miles an hour in the fast lane, right? That's what I was going, I think, on this particular day. And when Caltrans is working, normally they're going to put cones out in the lane and maybe a sign that says, Lane ends in usually a mile. Sometimes they've got it in two miles. There's a sign that lights up down the hill and they tell you this is when it's going to end. And they missed that. They missed that on this particular day. They had basically 200 yards until a lane was going to finish and they had all these cones out. And so I'm driving along in the fast lane. I see these cones and I'm paying attention. And I'm looking to my right, and my wife is looking to our right because she sees this coming too, and there's a semi-truck right there that's probably going about 68. Keep in mind, we're going 72. Four miles an hour faster, which isn't that much faster when you're looking at a span of 200 yards. So I got to figure out how to get in front of this truck because I can't brake because there's more shit going on behind me. I've got to get in front of this truck. And anybody who's got a Raptor, 
especially one of the newer ones since they went away from the 6.2 liter V8, knows two things about the Raptor. One is that the exhaust note sounds like absolute shit. It sounds like a rented Nissan that you would get from Hertz when you're going on a vacation. Second thing you know about it is that it's dramatically underpowered. There's no reason for them to have a V6 in that, and I know it's a tuned up with a twin turbo, but it doesn't matter. It is way underpowered. It's got like 420 horsepower, and it really needs north of 600 for how big that truck is. But still, I sit there and I just floor it. Because I'm like, we gotta get in front of this truck. And it's barely making it, barely making it. My wife is looking in the rear view mirror, like the side rear view mirror on her side, the passenger side, and she like has this look on her face like, holy shit. Like it was the look of like, oh, we're, we might die right here. And it turns out that we made it. And she says that when she looked in the rear view mirror, she said that we were easily within six inches of the bumper of this truck. Like the rear quarter panel, uh, the rear quarter of my truck was within six inches of the front driver's side of this semi. Now going 70 miles an hour, had I actually hit that, it could have kicked the back end of my truck out and we would have instantly flipped over and going 70 miles an hour, I can't tell you how many times we would have flipped over, but I do feel pretty certain that all four of us would be dead, right? I would be dead. My wife would be dead. My daughter and my son, we all would have died right then and there. And we didn't, right? And I thank God for that because I'm sure God intervened. But the lesson that I get in this is that other people's inattention demands a greater degree of your attention. So many people aren't paying attention right now. I'm sure that the guy that worked for Caltrans that put the cones out didn't intentionally make it only 200 yards. It was cold outside. It was like 17 degrees. I'm sure he's having a shitty day because he's got to work outside in 17 degree weather. But it was his inattention. His inattention to the detail of what I'm sure his job is, which is to make sure that there is ample notice and a safe way to get from the lane that they're closing into another lane but he didn't have attention. Now it's a good thing I was paying attention because raise your hand if you've ever not been paying attention when you're driving your car down the freeway. Everybody should be raising their hand right now. But half the people that are watching this on YouTube are watching it while they're driving someplace. So there is inattention going on in the world right now, but everybody else's inattention requires you to pay even more attention. And I am grateful that I was paying attention on this particular morning because that's the only reason that I am here giving you this podcast today. But if you look around the world, there's so much that's competing for your attention right now. Your phone pushes you notifications. Like it lights up all the time, doesn't it? Text message notifications. I use this app called Voxer a lot, which is like a voice chat app. That lights up all the time. Things that light up from like notifications, like I've got a new email or phone call or whatever, right? And every single app says, wants to send you notifications when you download it, doesn't it? That's competing for your attention. It's trying to give you inattention which means it's that much more important for you to fight for the things to which you will pay attention. And what's crazy about this is that if you start actually doing this and consciously paying more attention to all the things around you in your life, you're going to see your effectiveness go through the roof in a way that you probably can't contemplate right now because it's so powerful. We don't recognize how much inattention there is in the world right now because we've all decided that there is an addiction to our phones. And I'm holding my phone up if you're watching on video, if you're listening on audio only, trust me, I'm holding my phone up. There is a willingness for all of us to be addicted to this thing and it's okay because if we saw somebody on the street, let's say you saw somebody on the street or in your neighborhood every Tuesday morning drinking straight out a bottle of wine, you'd think like, oh man, that person has a problem. We need to get them some help. But you see everybody everywhere with their face buried in their phone because it's the one addiction that we've all said like, oh, that's cool. We can all be addicted to it and nobody's got a problem with it. But the truth is, is that it's taking away people's attention, attention from the things that are right in front of them. If you find yourself getting called to your device Notice that every single time that's doing, it's taking your attention away from what is right there. My wife and I play this game, and we first started playing it when we went to Las Vegas for a weekend. We go away once a quarter, uh, and we spend the weekend together without the kids. It's just a great way to reconnect. 
um, and just spend time with each other without people needing us for everything. And so we were in Las Vegas and we were at a nice restaurant. I forget the name of the restaurant. It was in the uh, Wynn Hotel. That's where we go. We usually like to go to the Wynn. Um, and so we went there and we're looking around the restaurant and the restaurant wasn't packed, maybe half full. But my wife looks around and says, look at this. She noticed it before I did. And I looked around and every single other person in that restaurant was looking at their phone even though they had somebody sitting right across from them. And in that case, both of them were staring at their phone. See, the inattention demands of you greater attention. All right, so let's look at this in a couple of different contexts because here's the thing, is that in business, you want to have things be perfect. You do, because if they're perfect in theory, you'll wind up making more revenue, more profit, collecting more cash, and that all works. And you want it to be more perfect than anyone else. You do. But you still, you've got teams because your fulfillment can only go so far. You've got to clean up regardless of how good your team is. You could hire the best people out there in the world, but they're all going to be subject to this fundamental human problem right now, which is inattention. So it's not that they're bad. It's not that your team sucks. It's that you've got to pay attention to their inattention because you can't expect them to operate as high as you. You've got a very, very high level of operation if you're a business owner, especially if you're a business producing between a million and 10 million and up a year, you have got a very, very high degree of efficacy. Your teams, no matter how good you are at leading them, no matter how good you are at cultivating them, are going to have a challenge when it comes to their attention because of what we just talked about especially in a business context, because most people think everybody else's time is more important than their own, which is why they open their email first, because they think that whoever's getting to them an email, that their time's more important than theirs. I'm going to challenge that, but I'm going to challenge that in a different episode. But this thing, it's the same thing, right? We just talked about business, but it's the same damn thing in relationships too. Often, the perception of inattention is because you haven't called attention to what you need. I've got a buddy whose wife is always mad at him. And she's always mad at him because he doesn't do what she's thinking he should do. It's not about what he's thinking she should do. She'll admit it too. She's like, well, I just, I want him to read my mind. And it's like, your inattention to telling him what needs attention is why you've got a problem. So there's inattention everywhere. And just like everything, it is a multi-dimensional problem, right? There's four dimensions in your life. There's body, there's being, there's balance, there's business. And you think you might have a problem in one of those areas, but the reality of it is, is that our lives are completely intertwined between those four domains. And when we've got a problem in one domain, it bleeds into every domain. So what I want you to do as part of today's episode, this is your thing that I need you to go do, call to action, like go do this in the next 24 to 48 hours because it is going to improve your life. I want you to think about a place in your life where you have been at a state of inattention that you need to shift to paying more attention. It's a simple thing. It's a conversation of presence, isn't it? I couldn't tell you how many people, when you talk to them about their family and what their biggest issue is, is that they are not present and they fully know it. So where in your life do you have inattention right now that's going to demand of you a greater degree of attention? And once you figure that out, guess what the next step is? Just start paying more attention because you're going to get way more results when you do that. All right, guys. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, if you got something out of it today, what I'd love for you to do is to share this episode with a friend that you think needs to hear it. You know people that I don't know and probably will never know. And the only way that I'm ever going to get linked up with those people and they're ever going to get this message in the other messages that are in this podcast, well, then it's got to be because you share it with them. Simple ways to share it. If you're watching it on YouTube, you just click the share icon, copy the link, text it to them. Same thing if you're listening on Apple, Android, Spotify, like wherever it is, right? You can just share it, text it to a buddy that needs to hear it. And that is certainly going to make me feel good because it's helping more people. So please do that for me. All right, guys, that is it for the show today. I'm going to do my job and come back next time. I want you to do your job and you come back too.